a watercolour seashell tutorial. That's what we're going to be doing in this video. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle and on this channel I teach all things watercolour, including colour mixing techniques and even a little bit of mixed media. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make one free video here a week on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content on Saturdays for my Patreon subscribers. Now my channel has been growing super fast and I'm very very grateful to all of you who have subscribed recently and there's one thing I've been asked to do more than anything else and that's seashells. So uh, you all love seashells. So we're going to paint this one today and um, this is kind of my favourite type of seashell. It's, um, it's very shiny, I like the shine actually. I'm going to show you some tricks of how to make the seashell shiny. It's quite nice underneath but there's not a lot of colour underneath so we're actually going to be painting it from the top and I don't know if you can see but it's got this lovely stripe along it too. You'll see that more as I put it um, on the camera for the, uh, for the actual painting. So I'm going to give you some drawing tips, I'm going to give you some colour mixing tips. You can follow along if you like because we're going to do it in steps, we're going to do it in 10 steps. I'm going to show you each stage of this painting and uh, we're going to do it almost in um, a botanical style. I don't mean that we're going to spend you know 40 hours on it, people on uh, YouTube have short attention spans. So we're going to do it in a, a botanical style but not too detailed so it'll be quite simple but it will look quite realistic and I'm going to drop a little bit of shadow underneath it so we'll imagine it just sitting on a piece of white paper. As I said if you want to follow along you can do so. I will give you colour alternatives if you don't have the same colours as I have. I'm going to show you some um, some mediums, some materials we're going to use today to go alongside the watercolour. Again if you don't have these it's not a problem you'll still be able to follow this tutorial as long as you've got some basic watercolour paints. So what I'm going to do now is point the camera downwards and we'll get started. And the first thing we're going to do is to draw our seashell. So for those of you who like to know what paper I'm using, I'm just using some bocking for today. Um, I generally, just for YouTube demonstrations, unless I'm working on one of my own paintings, I'll use something fairly cheap, a practice paper um, from a named brand. And uh, I actually I actually painted on bocking for, for many years. It's not the uh, it's not the end of the world. So it's it's a really simple shape, this seashell. I've, I've got it sat in front of me on a, on a piece of white card just um, out of camera shot in front of me. And um, it's really important with these uh, with these sort of simple shapes that you do just take the time to just see exactly what shape they are. It's so easy, you know, if you're drawing something like an orange, you think, well, it's round and it's orange, you know, and uh, there we are, job done. But it really is a little bit more complicated than that. And if you don't get that initial drawing right, then um, you know, nothing else tends to tend to look right about it. There's a big difference between an orange and a satsuma. They may look superficially the same, but actually when you get into it, there's a lot of difference between the shape of them. And if you drew them without colour, you should still be able to make it look like one or the other. And the same with these seashells. It's really easy to think, well, it's sort of oval, it's kind of flattish at the base, but actually you need to get this bit right. And there is a, a sort of a width to here. And so I won't be afraid of just taking a minute or two just to make sure that I get it right. I, I see so often people just skipping this stage and just really sort of um, really doing it without thinking. So do take the time when you're drawing something simple just to realise that it still has its own sort of levels of complexity. You still need to get those shapes right in order for it to look like the thing that it is. So I'm working with, I've got a soft pencil here, this is I think it's an 8B, and uh, I've got a little De La Roni Firm Putty Rubber, and just putting those shapes in. I'm also just going to indicate where the, uh, where the little line is, where this orange line is. I really just keep playing around with it until I feel that I've got this part of it right, before we go on to the next stage. So what is it that makes this seashell look shiny and how can we make it look shiny in our picture? Above all else, it's the light highlights. So what we're going to do is use a tiny bit of masking fluid in order to catch those pure white highlights on the seashell. So at this stage, I've got some schminky masking fluid and this is the white one and that's because I found the blue one was staining my paper a little bit. And I've decanted some of it just into a little plastic dish Masking fluid is so easy to knock over and I am not very much of a clumsy person but it really is easy to knock over. If you get it on your clothes um, you'll be living with it forever. There is 
there is a product that gets it out but um to be honest you need to buy so much of that product that um you know it, it can just be cheaper to to throw the clothes away just, just depending of course how much you've uh, spent on your clothing but uh, the best thing is just to avoid that so i'm putting in some white highlights now as i can see them i'm trying to avoid them being too sort of squarish even though a lot of them are coming from the uh, the windows over to my left if you can hear some tapping that's just rain on the studio roof um, it is at least keeping the pigeons a little bit quieter pigeons somewhat subdued today um, because of the rain I think so I'm just gonna in a couple of places get these highlights in the thing to remember is that even if they are square because they're coming from something like a window or they might be round because they're coming from a spotlight they're still going to to some extent follow the shape of the surface they're on so even if they're square they're going to kind of curve round so I'm trying to exaggerate this feeling of us being on a curved surface here the whole job of an artist is to convince the viewer that they're not looking at 2D they're looking at 3D so you never want to miss an opportunity to, uh, to curve a decoration on a surface I'm just going to get a little bit here as well there is actually a very um, significant spotlight because um, I've got a spotlight on my work a very significant spotlight thing here but you know you want to keep it fairly natural looking I've also got two shadows going on underneath the objects I'm just going to pick one of those and that is the thing when you have natural and artificial light you'll start to get um, light coming from multiple sources so just be you know a teeny bit sensible about it and just have a think about where it would um, where it would actually be if it was just coming from one direction I'm just going to get a little bit up there and that's plenty and those pure white highlights are going to make our object look shiny if you have any objects um, sitting around you at the moment just have a glance at something you know if you've got something like a glass of water or a painting glass you'll notice you get pure white highlights and that's a lot of what makes the object look shiny so we've reserved those now and we'll take them off at the end of painting the seashell so let's look now at colour mixes. Now we want these colours to be natural, but we also want to give them a little bit of life as well. So I'm going to go through the colours that I'm going to be using and I'll give you some options for other colours and other mixes if you don't have the same colours as me. So it's really important that you let your masking fluid dry. This schminky white masking fluid tends to go clear as it dries. If you've got one of the blue ones, you may find that it just goes slightly darker. It will still feel tacky if you haven't used masking fluid before. You're going to find it still feels tacky if you press your finger against it, but it shouldn't be wet and it will ruin your brushes if you get it on them. So I do suggest that you, um, you are very careful letting that dry. Now, whilst that's drying, of course, we can work out which colours we're going to be using. So I have some ideas about the seashell. Um, we need to put a wash across the underneath of it, which is going to be sort of just like an off-white, a cream. So we're just knocking it back very slightly from pure white. There is a colour that I have that is pretty much ready-made for this. So I'll swatch that one for you. This is um, Daniel Smith Buff Titanium. So we could use this one. It's an unusual watercolour and one that I only acquired recently. I, up until that point I would generally mix my own colours so what I would do for this mix is I would get some lemon yellow, some cerulean blue and a blue based pink like a rose. So why have I chosen those three rather unusual specific colours? What I'm doing basically is I'm using the three primaries but I'm using the lightest cool based versions of them. So here we are with a little bit of lemon. And any of these light colours are going to be majority water anyway. So then I'm going to find a little bit of ceruleum or any of those light turquoisey blues could be used. Even a green based thalo blue could be used, but you'll have to use very tiny amounts of it. So you can pop a bit of that in, you'll see it'll go greenish. And then we're going to balance it out by putting the third primary in. And in this case, I'm going to use a little bit of quinacridone rose. And you'll see that it starts to go towards neutral. Now it's still a bit green. Now green is made of yellow and blue, so that means I need a bit more pink in. So let's get a little bit more pink in it. Could be a bit too lilac. With these very pale colours, you really need to swatch them before you can see how they're looking. So let's pop that on there. That's not bad, is it? I could make it a bit yellower if I wanted to, so I can put a bit more of the yellow in. 
Look at that, a lovely neutral and a little bit less opaque than the Daniel Smith colour there. I don't mind a bit of opacity with seashells actually, a lot of them are very opaque and so it can look nice. So what other colours might we use? Well there's definitely some coolness, there's some grey blues, so um, you could use something like a little bit of Prussian, but I actually like to use a little bit of Payne's Grey, which is our blue based grey. It's a strong colour so we're going to need to use it very lightly. We may also put a little bit more of that cerulean in so that we start getting those soft blue greys. There's also a definite hint of warmth. Now I've got this colour here, this is um, Jackman's Art Materials Burnt Sienna and the other colours I used here if you're wondering were the Talons Rembrandt colours. So let's just swatch a little bit of that. So there's a definite hint of that brightness and that warmth there. So I may be using just the very, very tiniest amount of that colour too. I could also use Burnt Umber. You may not have Burnt Sienna. If you don't have Burnt Sienna, you can just use Burnt Umber. And then for the very, very darkest browns on top, what I want to do is use one of my favourite colours, which is Sepia. So Sepia is a strong, cold, dark brown. And this version here is by Talon's Rembrandt. Now, if you don't have this, you can mix your own version of Sepia. So let me show you how that's done. In almost every beginner's set, you have Burnt Umber and you have Ultramarine Blue. So we're going to take our Burnt Umber and we're going to darken it and cool it down by adding Ultramarine. Now, I'd be surprised if you don't have Ultramarine, but if you don't, you can actually use Cobalt as well, or you could use Phthalo Blue Red Shade. You want to avoid turquoise blues because there's so much yellow in the brown there that you may end up getting green. So any of those purple leaning blues will do. You could even, as a push, use something like Indigo. And we can keep adjusting it and putting as much blue in as we want. So if we swatch the new color, so this is the colour we've made, as opposed to the burnt umber on its own. And you can see we've darkened it and cooled it down by adding blue. So this is the stage that I always go through with my paintings, swatching my colours and getting ready and making sure I've chosen the right ones. It's also a good time to look at your colour charts if you've made those two. As always with watercolours, it's best to work light to dark. So we're going to start by putting a wash of the palest colours over our seashell, you know, confident in the knowledge that we have already reserved those white highlights with the masking fluid. So ready to put my underwash in, I'm just going to make sure there's no pencil left where I don't want it. So I'm just going to carefully lift out some of that. Being careful not to take the eraser over the top of any of the masking fluid because that would remove the masking fluid straight away. I just don't want any pencil left anywhere within the shell that's going to be fairly white. So just going to take those little bits out there. I've got the colour I mixed. This is actually a, a mixture between the colour that I was mixing from those Talons primary colours and also some of the Daniel Smith buff titanium. I've kind of chucked a bit of everything in there and it's a fairly watery mix. What I'm going to do now is apply it over the seashell but with, uh, with an eye on how the seashell itself looks and we're going to vary the colour as we apply. You almost always want to apply your colour wet into wet so that you get little variations. The only time you wouldn't do that is if you were looking for a dead flat wash. So I'm going to start here working with a fairly small brush but it's also big enough to get across easily so this is a size six. You can see how big the uh, the seashell is compared to the size of my hands. I do actually have, I am quite small, I do have very small hands but you can get an idea. You'll notice I managed to get my nails done for the very first time since the beginning of the pandemic. I've had a few um, men come onto this channel and uh, comment on uh, me not being a proper lady because I have sometimes um, black nail varnish or, um, or blue or green nail varnish. So if you're a gentleman watching this and you're about to make that comment, um, you know, Maybe just don't really because this is an art channel, not a makeup channel. Dropping a bit of blue in there just because I think it will look quite nice. And I think we'll get a little bit of Payne's Grey in as well. This is very pale, this layer, so we don't want to go too far with all of this. You'll notice as well that even though I do like to get my nails done in crazy colours, they're always very short. And the reason they're very short is because my... Um, my main hobby when I'm not painting is um, martial arts, to be more specific, uh, Chinese martial arts such as Kung Fu and Tai Chi. And um, it's not possible to punch properly um, when you have long nails because they literally dig into your own hand. So as I said, the uh, the gentlemen that uh, are trying to turn me into a lady really have, uh, really have a task on their hands, shall we say, because I rather enjoy sparring and 
weapons training. So there's our first layer. So we're going to look at midtones now and whilst we've got some very dark marks and some very dark sort of soft circles on this seashell we've also got some midtones as well so behind those sort of very dark very cold brown colors we've also got these kind of lighter warmer softer colors so we're going to put those in next whilst the first layer is still wet so whilst this layer is still wet i'm going to put a tiny bit of the burnt sienna in it's a really strong color and it's very warm so we're going to be very, very careful with it. I'm also going to just dry my brush a little bit because I really don't want it going everywhere. So I'm just going to start looking at putting some of that in, in small places, keeping the paint fairly dry. So as I've explained previously, you need the paint to be fairly dry, otherwise it will spread too far. If I go on at this stage with drippy wet paint, it's going to be all over the place. I'm also at this point starting to consider where the darks sit within the seashell. So the light is coming in from this side here, so I'm going to keep this area light. I'm going to start building up some more of those darks. Some of this warm colour will be covered up by the very dark brown later on. You can see it's starting to dry a little bit there. In fact, I think we'll take a bit more water over that area and go in just a little bit again with some more of the Payne's Grey. And getting these sort of medium colours in now. Again, I've got almost a hint of blueness down the bottom here, so going back to my cerulean. Cerulean is a really useful colour because it is so light and delicate. It almost never looks too heavy, even though it granulates heavily. Ultramarine also granulates heavily, but ultramarine can look too heavy if you're not careful with it, whereas cerulean almost never does. So starting to work in these darker areas here. We also need to make sure we start getting this nice straight edge along here and we're starting to build up those lighter dots behind the dark ones. So what about that lovely stripe down our seashell? We're going to do that next and we're going to add it very, very quickly and easily in a technique I've shown you in previous videos. So we're going to be using watercolor pencil and you need to do this while your previous layer is still wet. So this stage is really simple. We're gonna go straight in with a watercolor pencil and we're getting that line down the center of the shell. So important to keep looking back at your picture, just dipping the pencil itself into a little bit of water there because the picture is starting to dry and I want to get that pigment coming out nicely. So I'm just going to make sure it's nice and wet there. And that's as much of that as I'm going to put on. I need to, at this point, let this picture get completely dry. You can see how the paper is bumping up. If this was part of a larger painting and I wanted it to be pristine and perfect, I would of course be working on stretched paper. So I'm going to let this get completely dry now. So at this stage, we're going to do something a little bit unusual. I'm gonna show you another way of making your seashell look extra shiny. We're going to use this. It's called Gum Arabic. It's a uh, watercolor medium. I'll explain what it is and how you use it. Don't panic if you don't have it. It's not essential for making this painting. You can just use water for this next layer, but let me show you what it's for. I think you'll find it really, really exciting. At this point, if you're getting some value from this video, could I ask you for a favor, please? Could you just click the like button? YouTube rewards audience interaction. So if you like, share, subscribe, or even leave me a nice comment, YouTube will reward this channel by pushing it out to more people. So more people see this video and I get to teach more people how to paint a seashell. So here I have my gum Arabic and this one's by De La Veroni. Now, gum Arabic is actually often used in watercolour binders. So if you ever take the lid off your watercolour tube and a load of clear sticky stuff comes out, it may not entirely be this, but um, it's probably partially gum Arabic. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tip a little bit of this out. Now, it's sold as a separate medium and I actually use it most often for painting water reflections. And that's actually a tutorial I'm about to do on YouTube. In fact, I was going to do water reflections this week and another lovely um, British YouTuber put up a post on Facebook saying, this week I'm doing water reflections. And I thought, oh God, I, I can't put the same, well, not the same video, I can't put the same topic up um, you know, on the, a day later than her. It looks like I've copied her. So I've pushed that one back for a couple of weeks, but we will be using gum Arabic to do water reflections. It's an absolute game changer. So um, do let me know in the comments if you're interested in that one. So I'm not gonna apply it completely neat. I'm gonna put a little bit of water on my brush, but I'm not gonna put a huge amount of water in either. So what does it do? Basically, it's a retardant. So it slows down the amount of time your watercolor takes to dry. It also makes the watercolor you paint into it be very smeary. 
and it dries shiny which is why I had the idea of using it for this seashell so all I'm going to do is apply it right across what it means when you're using it is that instead of having you know on a hot day 30 seconds to apply your colors you may have five even ten minutes and as I said it dries shiny so it's an absolute gift to anything like water or shiny surfaces I haven't used it for seashells before but you know why not so you can see I'm painting it across here I'm going to put it across the whole shell if I was doing something like a huge expanse of water and I'll show you that in uh, in the upcoming video but if I was doing a much bigger area I would apply in sections and work into it in sections but because this is a fairly small seashell we're going to apply it right the way across so all I'm doing there is painting it on top and you can see the stuff underneath hasn't moved much at all now if you're watching this video and following along you're thinking oh well I don't have any of this it's quite simple just use water for this next bit but you will have to work a little bit quicker when it comes to applying the paints so if you watch this first and see how it's done you can just do this with water it's by no means um, you know a, an absolute must-have that you use gum arabic it's just something that I thought would work quite well for this uh, for this subject so please don't panic if you don't have any at this stage we're going to apply these very very dark circular dots they're circular they look like they're sort of almost stamped on there and yet they're soft on the edges of course you could use a paintbrush but I've got a much much easier tool for you and I guarantee you've just got it laying around your house now although we're going to use the brush a little bit we're also going to use these which are cotton buds now I don't buy these ones with the plastic stems anymore these are some old ones I had lying around I now buy the uh, the paper ones because they're much better for the environment I'm sure you've all seen those ones on the uh, on the news that get stuck up sort of turtles noses and horrendous things like that so I now use the uh, the paper ones and what we can do is just press in so this is a really great way of getting a round mark that is not too exact so I'm just going to press in there and then we're going to use the uh, use the paintbrush to bring these together so I'm just getting a little bit of water in there and pressing on and getting this idea of those circular marks it's really great as well for things like animal fur and look at these lovely round marks we can get as I said this works just as well if you are working on top of water you just do have to be a little bit quicker. So I'm going to put lots of these around. Also for one or two of them I'm going to dip a little bit into my Payne's Grey and maybe a touch of the Cerulean too. And at this point I'm going to go in with the brush and join some of these areas up. You can see I've painted more of my hands I think than the paper. So I'm going to get a little bit of that colour on there and start going in. The top of the seashell here is really really very dark. I don't want to go all the way around that edge, it's going to look a little bit unnatural so again going in with some of those darker greyer tones and just joining up in places. And it's really staying wet for quite a long while. And there's a little bit of a curve on this edge here so we're going to get that in as well. And at any point I can just add more water. So it kind of, um, even though it's starting to dry, you're kind of avoiding those, uh, those really hard drying lines that you often get. And I also want to kind of get this impression of this orange bit almost being outlined here. And take some of this down. Always trying to link it back into these little spots. Making sure that we leave some of those underneath colours showing through. Now I don't have to worry too much about this bottom edge because it will actually be shown up by the shadow but nevertheless there will be a slight little bit darker around the base here so I'm just going to drag some of that colour along in order that we do get shadow towards the base of the shell and again going back in with my darks here and joining up some of these areas anywhere you've got masking fluid you want to consider going quite dark there in order that when the masking fluid is taken off the highlights, the white highlights, are as bright as possible and they'll be as bright as possible because you have darks next to them. So wherever we've got this, uh, these areas here, where we've got the masking fluid, we're going to try and go really dark next to them. Again, trying to highlight that orange area there without covering everything up, and all of those previous layers that we've done. Just want to get a little bit of some greyish shadow down this area here as well. Perhaps just a little bit of the blue in there to highlight that area too. And I think I'd like some more of the smaller spots now, so we'll go back in with these. 
it's a balancing act really because there's lots of dark shapes on here but you do not want to lose all of the underneath colours we've placed on. So I'm getting to the point now where there's, I've done pretty much as much as I want to with it. There's always, you know, one or two last minute adjustments. Once I take that masking fluid off, I may just feel like I want to tidy up one or two of these edges or that there's more that needs doing. So I'll be having a look at it at that stage too. But I'm almost at the stage now where I'm happy to stop painting on this part. Good idea just to have one or two of these tiny dark spots, sort of almost like a half spot, because you don't want it to look like they just stopped at the edge here. Of course, they go round the other side as well. So we want to get that idea of the spots continuing round the side there by not doing the, you know, a full spot, but by doing sort of a half spot here. Just going to join up a little bit more in this central area here. Get a little bit more of the outline along that orange stripe, but without it looking like I've fully outlined it all the way round, which would seem you know, very unnatural. And at this stage, I'm going to let it dry. Now it's time to remove the masking fluid and see how the seashell is looking before we go on to the part where we add the shadow. So it really is important that your work is completely dry before you do this part because it's so easy to smudge masking fluid and you might think that your work's dry and there might be a little bit of wet paint left on top of the masking fluid. So as I said, make sure it's completely dry. And I'm going to take this off and really quite happy with how that's looking at the moment. And if at any point you can't remember where the masking fluid is, if you just run your fingers across, you will feel if there's any little bits of rubber on there, you will feel it. So quite happy with that. And I don't know if you can see, if I tip a little bit, but the, um, the gum arabic has made it shiny as well. Now it will reactivate and um, I do feel that possibly areas of it need to come together a little bit more. So I may put another layer of water across carefully just to blur certain areas. Um, I will be careful, of course, to avoid those white bits. Now, the reason I haven't left the masking fluid on to the very end of the painting, even though I might make further adjustments, is I just feel there's a certain point in a painting where you need to actually see it as it is. And I need to take the masking fluid off almost to see if any more adjustments are needed. I just wouldn't be able to see very well, um, especially with the coloured masking fluids. You can't tell how it's going to look. So I'm also going to take an um, eraser around the outside here and start cleaning up the pencil line too, ready to put the shadow in. And then I'll probably go back in at the end and see if the shell itself needs any more adjustments. Now, if you're thinking at this point that you'd like to see a, um, a whole seashell tutorial with lots of different seashells, I will probably do other single shells on YouTube because this is a very unusual type of shell. Many of them are that sort of chalky color. We can take a completely different approach to those. So I will do other types of seashells on here if you would like to see that. If you want a full length tutorial on seashells and background, a whole painting, I do have one on my Thinkific site. I'll put the link in the uh, in the description below. Um, you can buy that as an individual project or it's also part of my larger watercolour and mixed media course. If that particular course doesn't interest you, I will be making one soon, which is going to be basic watercolour techniques. If that's something that you think that you might be interested in, you can sign up on the Thinkific site. It's free to make an account there. And then I'll know that you're interested in the courses. And when I have that next course ready, I'll send you an email. So at the time of making this video, that course isn't ready, but it will be up in the next few weeks. At this point, we're going to add some shadow. I'm going to do this in a sort of a botanical manner. In other words, I'm going to do it as if the seashell was just sitting on a white piece of paper or a white cloth and we had some shadow there. So I'm going to be a bit unusual. I often like veering into a little bit of the blues and greys for this or sometimes even lilacs. So we're going to make the shadow colour a little bit more interesting. However, I will give you some other options if you'd like to make yours look a bit more naturalistic or even as if it was just sitting on the beach. So I've sketched a light shadow area in here. So it's just a tiny, tiny line. I don't wanna to go too dark with that because I don't want it to show once the shadow's in. What I'm going to do now is add a shadow and fade it out towards the edges. Now I'm gonna show you how this is done, but if you haven't done it before, it can be a bit tricky. So do have a practice on a scrap of paper first. Just draw yourself a little line. Imagine that you're um, doing a shadow under something curved like the bottom of a vase or a jam jar or a seashell. 
I do actually have a video that explains exactly how to do this technique. In fact, several ways of doing this technique. So if you find this bit tricky, I'll, uh, I'll put a link above in the information cards. Some of you said you don't see those information cards. It depends which device you're on. So I'll also put a link, if I can remember, in the video description. Um, or you can just um, look for it on the on the YouTube search with my name against it. It's um, something like um, Soft Edges in Watercolour. That's the name of it. So what I want to do now is I'm going to put water on this surface and then we're going to drop the paint on top. And just for fun, we're going to have a really bright shadow colour here. So this is French Ultramarine by Jackman's Art Materials. And do remember that I work with this company, so there is a 10% discount in the description if you would like it and um, this is a really beautiful color so the difference between ultramarine and french ultramarine is that french ultramarine tends to be a little bit more towards the purple side which makes this a very beautiful color and when you set it off against these neutral colors it really looks lovely as i said you could go more into you know doing a uh, a sand background i actually did a video recently on how to paint a beach though of course People from all over the world did point out that not all beaches are the same colour, which is very true. But if you want a sort of a sandy yellowish beach, I do have that video for you. So what I'm doing is I'm taking water and I'm painting it for right up to the edge or almost to the edge of the seashell without quite touching it and taking it out quite away. This is because we don't want the paint to go off the edge of the water. We want a soft edge. It's fairly warm in here despite the rain, so I'm going to go in now and get a little bit of my colour and I don't want the paintbrush to be too wet so I'm just drying it on a little bit of kitchen paper and now I'm going to go in and what it means is that I can then take this paint right up to the edge there so I stopped the water just by the edge of the seashell and that just enables me to take that right up to it if I had taken the water over the edge of the seashell then the paint would have bled inside and we're just going to take that shadow out there. Paper is drying remarkably quickly so we're not going to worry too much about manipulating it too much I'm just going to get it roughly in the shape it was going with a bit of thicker paint close in. With a shadow like this you generally speaking want it to be darker at the edge of the object and to fade out further out and that's dried a little bit too flat for me so I'm actually going to get a clean damp brush and take that along the edge as well. As I said, do have a look at that other video if you need to see this in more detail. And the trick to it is not to work on it too long, so I'm just going to let it dry now. All I'm going to do now is just for a final finishing touch, I'm just going to go in with some clean water across some of these areas here, being careful to avoid the masking fluid area as much as I can. It just feels a little bit um, spotty to me still and I just think it needs all just linking together a little bit more. So I'm going to just put a little bit of a wash over the top. I have to be careful because this, uh, this sepia colour is very dark and if I'm not careful I will lose all of those light areas that I painted so carefully early on. Just being careful there but I'm just trying to somewhat bring everything together and we're going to do the same here just below this line as well. So even though we've had the gum arabic there, we're still able to go back in and work on top and soften everything just slightly. I've got a little bit of smudging around this area here, so again I'm going to go in with my brush and just clean that up. At this point I'd like to say a special thank you to those of you who support me on Patreon. It really does mean the world to me, especially at this time of pandemic when I have lost so much of my income from, that I used to gain from teaching classes in the real world and giving demonstrations and talks to art clubs. Now if you have enjoyed this video you might like to see my video on watercolour pencils. So we used a watercolour pencil to make the stripe along the seashell in this video. There's loads of ways you can use watercolour pencils alongside your watercolours. You'll be absolutely astonished the things you can do with them. You can watch that video right now.